number of courses which are now available online that can be utilized by anyone, any institution. And we also have classes conducted by video conferencing. But our major discussion for the past few months was to how we address the next challenge, how to efficiently transfer the knowledge to practice. And we came up with this proposal called International Network for Advancing Transdisciplinary Education. This is to create a platform where we can bring in different stakeholders, inviting academia, professional bodies, local governments, and the private sector to work together with the user communities to collective problem identification and sustainable solution development. And this cannot happen at one shot. It has to be an iterative process. So these platforms should be an incubator for each locality where we try out different solutions and we go through an iterative process of program development. And this is where the professional body, especially the engineering organization, can really help to transform the current practice of feasibility studies to more multi-stakeholder oriented iterative process. If you take any other discipline, mechanic, the, the manufacturing, medical, we always have this iterative process, but we don't have much of it in the infrastructure development programs. So the idea is that we do this transdisciplinary incubator projects as pilot projects in the first stage, and then upscale it to the real development agenda. So in conclusion, you said there are large uncertainties in future development directions, and due to the, our ability to project or estimate future climate at local scale. Therefore, building redundancy, diversity, and resistance, as well as recovery mechanisms, considering multi-stakeholder involvement, is a very pragmatic and effective approach to reduce those impacts of global change. And we need to combine centralized and decentralized measures to provide the scalability needed to evolving yes. risks. And we found that it depends on a different uh, community. For example, in the urban areas, it is 30-70. In the reserve areas, it was uh, much less in the distributed systems. So depending on the level of economic development, we have a pro probably a, this compromise between the or optimal point between the centralized and the decentralized systems. We need to develop transdisciplinary approaches in planning and implementing development projects to build this community resilience. At the moment, we don't have a very clear idea of how to plan and implement these multi-stakeholder programs because we do not know who should be responsible, who is accountable, and how the transfer of leadership takes place during the project lifetime. This is where I believe the engineers have a major role to play in bringing up these transformations. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Professor, for your enlightening address and sharing your wealth of experience with us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the pleasure of inviting our chief guest who graduated from the University of Moratua with a BSc Honours Degree in Engineering, specialising in power systems before assuming the office of the Minister of Megapolis in Western Development in the recently appointed Cabinet of the Government. He previously served as the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources from February 2007 to April 2010, as the Minister of Power and Energy from April 2010 to January 2013, as the Minister of Technology and Research from January 2013 to November 2014, and as the Minister of Power and Energy from January 2015 to September 2015, and that was for the second time. And prior to entering full-time politics, he served as the Director of Strategic Enterprise Management Agency, SIMA, and as a consultant as the Department of Engineering and Mathematics of the Open University, Sri Lanka. He is also presently serving as the President of the 8th Conference of Parties to the Vienna Convention and as the General Secretary of the Jataka Hela Urana. He has presented many research papers at various forums, both local and overseas, and has authored several books in both English and Sinhala. It's my pleasure in inviting our Chief Guest this morning, Honorable Patali Champika Ranabaka, Minister of Megapolis in Western Development, to address you all. <laughs> 